Hi, I'm George Thompson. I'm a past president of the Scoliosis Research Society. Uh, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm here today to talk with you about kyphosis. Kyphosis refers to an abnormal curvature of the spine when viewed from the side. It causes a round back uh, deformity. Uh, there are two types of kyphosis. There is a postural form, and then there is a more structural form, which is called Schaerman's kyphosis. Postural kyphosis is a round back deformity, but there are no abnormalities involving the vertebral bodies. It is, as the name implies, it's a posture abnormality. The adolescent has the capacity to realign their spine voluntarily. The Schaerman's kyphosis, on the other hand, is a structural deformity. The vertebral bodies are abnormally shaped. They're narrower in the front and higher in the back, giving them a wedge-shaped appearance. And this is a more structural deformity. It is rigid and usually will not correct very much on, uh, by, by positioning. And so it is one that frequently may require uh, more active treatment. We used to do more surgery than we do today. We realized that Charmin's kyphosis does not result in any significant cardiac or pulmonary abnormalities. Uh, it can be associated with pain, and this is a common indication for surgical treatment, as is progression. But nowadays, we are doing surgery usually at 80, 90 degrees and, and higher. Well, you can expect to have the majority of your deformity corrected. Uh, the, the procedures that we use today will allow significant improvement in alignment. Uh, we bring it down to within the upper limits of the normal range. Uh, and the, typically this is going from a curve, let's say, of 100 degrees down to around 50 degrees. Um, it's a lot of surgery to go through, but when it's indicated, it is very useful. Surgery involves the uh, insertion of metallic implants into each vertebrae and these are used to connect rods to uh, the spine. These, there is compression applied uh, between the uh, implants, and this causes narrowing of the spine posteriorly and elevation anteriorly, which allows correction of the deformity. The spine fuses by, like a fracture, healing. The spine is roughened, bone graft material is, is laid over this, and the bone graft material acts as a stimulus for new bone to form. So we, we have more bone being formed posteriorly, which eliminates the need for any further joints in the back. But by doing this, it becomes a solid single piece of bone in the area where the rods were placed. Well, it will do both. The area where the rods are inserted will not grow anymore, nor will it become more deformed with time. And the surgery will also give you correction. You have to remember that the major goal in kyphosis surgery, just as in scoliosis, is to stop progression. The secondary improvement cosmetically is a, is a benefit, and of course families really want the secondary benefit, but the first goal was to keep them from getting worse and hopefully relieve pain. The recovery time is variable, but typically uh, you have surgery on one day. The next day you're up out of bed, and usually by the third, fourth, or fifth day you're going home. Most children and adolescents will need one or two weeks at home just regaining strength and energy. Uh, as they tolerate, they can return to limited activities. And they can swim, they can do light jogging, uh, they can do simple activities that will prevent them from having any additional injuries. So we ask that they restrict activities that would likely have them fall or be, be injured. At about the five-month period, a decision is made as to what normal activities they can return to. And for the majority of patients, they can return to gym, they can return to basketball, volleyball, baseball at about that time. If they're going to be involved with high-velocity contact sports such as football or hockey, we sometimes ask them to wait one year before returning to those activities. It's usually not recommended, but some children it's important and we will allow it under those circumstances. We rarely ever remove rods. Uh, if there's, there are particular reasons sometimes where we will, and that includes in a very thin child where the implants may be slightly visible beneath the skin and causing some irritation, we would consider removing them. 
Uh, if there's a, a broken rod or some other reason, we may consider uh, implant removal. But for the most part, we do not want to remove them. It's a, almost as big an operation to take the implants out as it is to put them in. Bone is a living substance. It always has micro motion. And with micro motion, the rods may fatigue over years and ultimately break. If a rod is broken, and we see that incidentally on an x-ray, but there's been no angulation where the rod is broken, there's no translation, we assume this is a fatigue fracture and that child will continue under observation. If there is some type of change in alignment, that would imply a pseudarthrosis or an area that did not fuse, and as a consequence, we would go in, repair the rods, and do additional bone grafting material to, to allow that area to heal and hopefully not be a problem in the future.